uh, this is Michelle Hamburger with Connors Clinic, and I am fortunate enough to be able to uh, interview again uh, Jim Cromer of EMF Inspecting. Jim and his wife, Loray, own an EMF inspection company where they can go into home and businesses and help them uh, learn how to uh, remediate or remove some of the harmful EMFs that are doing so much damage in our society right now. So thank you so much for being with me today, Jim. Well, thank you, Michelle. And I would just like to say that I, I feel like I'm the one who's fortunate <laughs> to be on your program and, uh, and just really appreciate it. And I'm excited for um, the opportunity to share with people how they might be helped and protected from the uh, blasting of EMFs that we're getting all around us. Oh, well, this is my absolute pleasure. So let's jump in. Today, we're going to talk about home EMFs. And uh, one of the things I want to mention before we begin is that uh, Jim is being gracious enough to offer up you know, things that we can do on our own to help our homes uh, stay healthier and things that we need to be watching out for as far as the major uh, culprits. He's going to be addressing three specific culprits that are in our homes that seem to emit the greatest amount of EMFs, but um, that's not uh, also to take away from the importance of having somebody who is an expert and is aware of what's going on in this field to come in or to provide counsel on what you can do. So we're going to be getting you started, but know that this rabbit hole goes very, very deep. And so I'm just so grateful that Jim is willing to disseminate some of this information to begin to get people on um, their way. But know that uh, on the end of this video, we will have information to uh, Jim and Lorraine's company so that if you would like further help in this, you can reach out to them. So uh, Jim, go ahead and take it away and get us started. Uh, okay, Michelle. And uh, the rabbit hole is getting deeper. Yes. Uh, you know, with the uh, at, with the advent of 5G and with the um, Internet of Things, it's like they want to make smart everything. And so, uh, people, yeah, we're just uh, we just hope more and more become aware and take steps because it's uh, it's very it's very harmful, very dangerous, and we're talking serious diseases. And so, I know. I know you're concerned about that too. And um, so, but at any rate, let's take the first one then. And this is actually the strongest uh, EMF radiating device that people have in their home. And it's called a microwave oven. So uh, microwave ovens use EMFs to heat their food, your food. And um, they use 2.45 uh, gigahertz RF radiation. So these are microwave um, energy and it passes through the cells and molecules of the food and it makes the uh, molecules vibrate uh, millions of times per second. And that's the friction that generates heat to heat up your food. So that's, that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? I mean, it's fast, it's easy. I mean, probably when you go into most restaurants, they're doing that and, uh, and people have these, uh, most people have them at their home. I mean, they're just built right in. Um, but here's the problem. They all leak radiation, all of them. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're new. It doesn't matter, um, you know, if they're old. Uh, we've tested them, you know, and they all leak radiation. And furthermore, the government guidelines, which would um, supposedly protect people, is so high. I'll just give you an, an idea. The government regulation is like 10 million microwatts, okay? Safe level is 100. So, <laughs> I mean, come yeah. on. That's, you know, so basically um, it's frying you and your food. Um, but there is a, um, and also this too, they, they, um, the signal it sends out is very strong. And so it goes right through the walls, right through the ceilings, right through the people, <laughs> right through everything. And it's nasty too. So we have really cool meters that uh, make noise. And this is good too, because sometimes, you know, like maybe the husband's into it and the wife isn't or vice versa. And so we go over and, and, they, and they hear that and they go, whoa, what's that? Because like I said, it's invisible. But when you hear it, like then you go, that is, that's for real. And the microwave has this really weird sound coming from it. And, and it's just, it's, <laughs> 
and your body's feeling it. Your cells are feeling it. You're, they're getting um, zapped and they're feeling it even if you can't uh, experience yourself. But, but there are many people now who are getting uh, what's called EHS, which is electric uh, hypersensitivity, and they are feeling it and they can tell. And it's really, it's even debilitating for them. So, Well, and so. if you think of what uh, microwave radiation is doing to your body or is the potential to do to your body, think of what it's also doing to your food and yes. then you're consuming that as yes. nutrition and yes. hoping that that's going to feed your body. So I know that I've heard of studies where people have microwaved water. I think there was actually an elementary school boy and I'm, I'm not going to remember the reference of the study where he had microwaved water and he'd watered one plant with microwaved water and another plant with just traditional water and the microwaved water ended up um, damaging or killing the actual plant. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you're just flowing right into what I was going into, but the, oh. um, <laughs> the, um, uh, yeah. And I've seen those on YouTube. The, um, it's not totally scientific, but it sure is interesting. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. uh, killing the plant there. So, um, but there are many, um, studies that show microwaves destroy the nutrients in, in your food. Uh, there was one by the Journal of Science that showed broccoli cooked in a microwave lo lost almost all of its antioxidants. Broccoli is a good, good deal, you know, especially if you get organic. Um, but, but there it goes. There goes your nutrition. And then some Russian and Japanese studies have discovered that foods lose uh, 60 to 90 percent of their food value when cooked in microwave ovens. So yeah, so okay, so it's destroying um, it's destroying your uh, nutrients, but then even worse, it's causing free radicals. Mm -hmm. And those uh, attack the cells of our body and damage them. And it's one of the main causes of cancer when I, a normal growth of cells because they're damaged. So, so yeah, so, so it's not just, well, the microwave maybe zapping me some no no it's it's doing more than that and and so um uh yeah yeah it's 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 a bad deal are there certain microwaves on the market that uh emit less radiation than others are is there anything that would be a good modification or in reality is every single microwave doing the same amount of damage to people and to food well, uh, it is, um, it, I'm sure the levels vary, but I'd say they're all just so, so high. It's not, it's not good. No, it's, there's, I, I do not know of anything and I don't think the uh, microwave oven companies care. Um, they, they, they just want to sell them. So, um, yeah, but it's, uh, I think as I was studying, um, they they have come out and and almost I think almost everybody has one. And some are getting wise and getting rid of them. I was at one home and um, I said, here I'll just I'll just test it for you. And then a little while later she goes, will you help me? Will you help me? And I said, sure. She said, I'm going to carry this. She wanted me to carry the microwave with her down into the basement <laughs> to get rid of it. She says my husband can't carry it. He's not strong. But so. <laughs> so that's what you wanted, but I mean, it's for real. Now, there's also something that uh, that people should know about too, and that's um, when plastics are microwaved, and when they are microwaved, dangerous chemicals like BPA can leak out of the containers, the covers, or the wrap, and it's absorbed into the food. And these chemicals uh, really mess with your body's hormones. And I know, Michelle, you know all this. And uh, again, a, a bad risk of developing problems, uh, fertility, cancer, and on and on and on we go. So it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a big deal and people are unaware and they'll actually, you know, they'll, they'll make some coffee or something and they'll just stand in front of it. Look, how's it doing? And then wants to know because the closer you are, the more you're getting zapped, the stronger right. the signal. Right. So what would be probably the wisest thing if a family was open to getting rid of their microwave? Uh, what are some things that families can do to 
to remove it, but then to also have an element of convenience still in the home of the simplicity of not having to fire up the full stove. Right. And um, well, first of all, um, on our safety tips here, if you, if you don't have one, don't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and if you have one, don't use it. And if you like it because it fits nice above the stove top, or you know it fits in your uh, aesthetics of your home, unplug it also. Because even when it's not uh, on, there's still like fields around it uh, that we've tested, electric fields and even magnetic fields radiating. Not not. Not as far as the regular microwave, but they're still radiating off. And I spoke, and if you're cooking on the stove, that could be right by your head too. So, uh, so any rate, but yeah. So what do you do? Um, uh, I actually will use the microwave for one thing, and that's to heat up my heating pad with the beads in it. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. But I get out of the room when I do it. Um, but I think maybe the best would be like a convection oven. Something what about like a toaster oven? Something toaster oven? small? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Um, and then, um, and then, really, I mean, are we going to sacrifice our health on the altar of convenience? And some people are. You know, I mean, pe seriously, I think um, there are people in the world who, even if you could absolutely prove, which we can, that EMFs are dangerous, they won't do anything, just because they like their they like their cell phone next to their head. They like, you know, all their conveniences and they'll just do it. But for those who will hear, have ears to hear, you know, you know, listen up and, and take precautions because um, this is not only like if you're on your deathbed or, you know, serious diseases, this is prevention. Just like you would eat healthy, you would exercise, you know, you would take your nutritionals. This is prevention. Mm -hmm. And prevention is better than trying to get cured and healed. Agreed. You would not believe how much we see that in our clinic. And that is our, our biggest struggle is to divorce our patients from their current conveniences and current lifestyle that has led them yes. to a point of um, developing dis-ease. So you are completely right about that. That makes sense, you know, and, and, and right. And, and when your lifestyle is a certain way, we like it. That's why it's our lifestyle. So, uh, so we don't want to change. So, okay. Some more stuff about, well, also, um, I thought I'd throw this out as far as cooking. Steaming's really good, you know, and that doesn't take that long. Some good uh, frozen veggies, you know, put them in the steamer and, um, that's, that's healthy. And again, organic, um, is good. Uh, so, okay. So if you have a microwave oven, don't use it for your food, use it for your heating pad. And, <laughs> and, and I know I've read some stuff on, on the internet say, says get six feet away. Well, that is incorrect. Uh, you need to be 20 feet away from that thing if you're using it. Wow. And uh, yeah, yeah. And out of the room, out of the room, 20 feet away. It, it blasts. It is really strong. So, um, and if you do use it for food, uh, never, ever, ever do plastic in that. So to sum up microwaves, it's the strongest radiation device in your home. Uh, I have entitled them super powered radiation machines. <laughs> maybe, we should, maybe we should call some of these things what they really are. Yeah, they're not microwaves anymore. Like cholesterol microwaves. chips, you know. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and then we have a, a little blog on our website and, and it's called Your Microwave is Microwaving You. And, uh, and that's the truth. So. Well, that is a pretty nasty first culprit. So. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it is. All right, so, culprit number two. Yeah, it's going to be wireless Wi-Fi routers. So again, this is um, using the RF radio frequency uh, signals, which is EMF, and it's when it's connected to the Internet. And it's the same radiation that's coming out of cell phones, uh, smart meters, laptops, baby monitors, tablets, and computers. The, um, and just a, a word about baby monitors, because um, that's a tough one, too, because mommy and daddy want to hear baby and make sure baby's okay. 
but they are absolutely bad and dangerous and zapping your baby. Um, maybe not as strong as a uh, microwave, but they are strong also. And it's not good. And it's not good. And it's just crazy right now. I mean, seriously, they're coming out with smart. There is smart diapers. Yes, smart there diapers, are. You know, and there's yeah. these mats that baby lays on and it kind of keeps track of their heartbeat and stuff. Those are all emitting dangerous EMF radiation. So, so I mean, um, I didn't really want to get into to all that other stuff, but, but I'm just throwing that out for people. You can Google it. You can check it out. It's for real. And we want your children to be protected. Yeah, I think the biggest thing on the market right now is the new owlet, I think it's called. And it's, it's you know, marketed like a little owl. And I think you put it on the baby's big toe and it's a Bluetooth wow. body monitor. And so it's constantly sending the frequency through the body to monitor exactly what you were saying. Heartbeat, breathing, all of that. So it's supposed to be able to track or provide you with a warning of potential SID like behavior or precursors when in reality that could actually be contributing to yes. SIDS. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. So so that's a yeah, that's a bad deal. I'm glad we brought that up. So okay, so um let's see, some of the physical symptoms from Wi Fi that people may be experiencing is sleep issues. It's a biggie. Um, headaches, memory, brain fog even burning, tingling, and numbness, extreme tiredness. And those are just like initial symptoms, but, um, but then it, it gets worse um, because um, when you factor in the other, like environmental toxins, it, it, it increases it exponentially. Okay, so, so if you put all the chemicals that we're getting from, um, you know, the – glyphosate and the water and the food and the, and the air and um, plus whatever else people are doing to themselves, spraying on their hairspray and, and you know, makeup and, and uh, spraying for bugs in their house, <laughs> whatever, and you add that with EMF, it, it is increasing. It's not one plus one. It's one plus 20 or whatever. Mm. And there was uh, uh, some research done that wireless and other uh, EMF radiation can act as a co-promoter and meaning the effect of a known carcinogen is intensified when the wireless is added into the mix. It's like mixing drugs. And so this is a really, really uh, bad deal. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, and then in um, even the WHO, the World Health Organization, which drags their feet and is way behind, is not doing what I think many, well, not just me. I mean, hundreds of scientists and thousands of studies are saying you got to do more. But they said four of their six uh, co-carcinogenesis studies showed increased cancer incidence after exposure of RF, EMF in combination with the no, known carcinogen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it acts syn synergistically with other toxic exposures to promote cancer. And I know you guys specialize in that, bless your hearts. And, um, but again, we prefer people not to get it. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, let's see. Now there was another study and this one uh, was without the other carcinogens and, and it, and, that, and they were confirming an earlier experiment, and they found that weak cell phone signals, and that's the same as Wi-Fi signals, promoted the growth of lung tumors, liver tumors, and lymphomas in mice. So uh, I think that yeah, we have another blog on our website, Tell It to the Rats. You know, so <laughs> it, it, it gives rats cancer, but not people, you know. And uh, okay, I don't know if I go for that one, right? <laughs> So, um, but at any rate, yeah. So that again, we're we're explaining the dangers of these things, um, just because if you don't know it's dangerous, you won't do anything, and hopefully, people are willing to change their lifestyles to be healthy. Right. Well, you're certainly going to have a. It's going to be a rarity for a family not to have Wi-Fi in the home because you're it right. seems like everything is connected to that. So, what yes. is something? 
simple or some things that are simple that people can do or be mindful of that can make a difference in their home. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's what we wanted to get to too. Not just uh, tell you this is dangerous, goodbye, but <laughs> give some <laughs> give some options or tips to do. Yes, because um, internet again uh, is something we all use all the time. So, um, but you will they will notice like when you're going to hook up your internet, what's all those other names on there? <laughs> that's mm -hmm. your neighbors and uh, who knows who else, um, and that shows just how strong these things are. So, best thing to do is hardwire. Hardwire to the internet with the Ethernet cable so you don't need Wi-Fi. And, um, and, and again, you know, like I said, we go and we do inspections on people's houses. And, uh, and they'll say, well, we're all good. We're hardwired. And I say, okay, fine. Let me, let me test it out. And sure enough, their router or modem is still zapping them. Because even though they thought they had the... Um, the Wi-Fi off, they didn't. And some of those things are very difficult to get the Wi-Fi off because they think everybody wants it all the time. And so we are happily radiating you 24 seven, uh, so on. Okay, so that's the best. Uh, then um, to move the router farther away from where you spend most of your time. Uh, that's kind of a no brainer, but we bring it out. And um, that's because one thing we teach people when we go to their houses is uh, called TDs, uh, which is, I think, a very good one to bring out now because the Super Bowl is coming up. Uh, TDs, like touchdowns, so you can remember <laughs> it. But it's uh, T is time, D is distance, and S is shielding. So the um, time, distance, and shielding are what we do with, uh, with some of these, you know, with the EMFs. So the less time you spend, in electromagnetic field, the less you're getting radiated, obviously, and the more distance you can get, then the, um, then, you know, the, the, the signal's stronger and the radiation is weaker. So that's, that's why we say move away. You know, don't just put it right next to you on your desk and sit there all day, you know, with it zapping you. Uh, okay, then also turn off the router when not in use. Uh, if possible, and I don't know, I've looked at some of the newer ones and they don't let you do this, um, but, but, um, but some of the, maybe the older, if you have a little older router, you may be able to do this if you, can, if you can figure out how to do it, but you can go to your router settings uh, up in your um, address on your, um, on your internet and look into there and sometimes you can turn down your power, which is really cool. Then also, like I said, we're probably not gonna throw that inner router out the door, is uh, get a router guard, a shield, cage, or sock. There's all different things, and you put those over it, and then that decreases the signal loss. I do know that, um, and I'm not, I, I won't be able to remember the pattern that, that I used, but I know that when I received my most recent router, it had actually two different Wi-Fi frequencies. It had a 5G and I believe a 2G. Yes. And so I had to Google, um, how to remove the 5G component through yes. my uh, internet provider. And it walked me through a series of steps and I actually ended up calling the company and working with one of their um, you know, provi providers or assistants uh, managers to walk me through the steps to remove the 5G component. And I know we'll talk about 5G at a different time, but what people might not even realize is you have multiple types of Wi-Fi yes. frequencies yes. coming through your router too, yes. not just one. Yes. And usually, um, so when you're, like I said, there's those different names when you, when you're hooking up to internet. So it'll probably show like the five, five, you know, the five G hookup and then, and there'll be two on there showing up for your house. And right. like you said, get rid of that five, five, five one, because, um, <laughs> because that's a double, it's a double zap. It's a double yep. whammy. So, um, and then this is, uh, and this is a very, maybe the most important thing is turn that thing off at night, turn it off at night. So when you're sleeping, your body is not getting, uh, you know, hit by that. Yeah. Uh, Have you done any research into covers that go over or around a router? Yeah. You have? Okay. And, um, 
have you noticed any differences if people put some kind of a protective cover around their router? Does that help? Oh, absolutely. Okay. It absolutely. Those work. So, um, again, you know, we're, we are uh, inspectors and consultants. And, um, and so when we do consulting or, or we're doing an inspection, you know, people ask us questions, whatever they want. And, um, and we, we recommend what we know works. So, um, now this is another kind of sidelight, but, but I'm afraid there's lots of scams out there mm. and I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but, um, but it's true. And, and so, you know, we, we test stuff and, and, and if it works, you know, I can test it scientifically. If I cannot test it scientifically, I'm not necessarily going to say it doesn't work, but I can't prove it. So I'm not really recommending it like that, but no, these, these covers that you can get, um, do work. So they don't cut totally cut the signal because then you wouldn't get your Wi-Fi. Right. So, um, but they'll knock it down like 90%, which is really good. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 So well, culprit number two, three, that was number two, right? Yeah. Was that was number, number two. Yeah. Yep. 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 So we have number three now. Okay. Yep. We're going to number now three. Now we're on. A, I, so I, was, I was closing out culprit number yeah, two. Oh, now we're entering in. <laughs> The I culprit number three. <laughs> nope. It was so good. We were going to do it again. So, okay. <laughs> so now the uh, third one is cordless phones. Um, good thing about cordless phones is less people are having them, but still many people do. And we go into homes and they're totally oblivious again. Um, at one point, um, well, okay, I'll, I'll go a little more into it. Um, can we solve the problem of cell phone radiation by using a landline phone? Answer is yes, unless it's a cordless phone. Mm. Because studies show that cordless or wireless telephones emit radiation just the same as cell phones, except for one thing. They emit health damaging EMFs constantly, even when not being used. And in many homes, I've tested these cordless phone radiation and it's even more, much more powerful than a cell phone. And it's constantly zoom, zapping out into the home. Mm. A little history, in 1983, cordless phones went mainstream, selling out in phone centers, and millions were purchased. Uh, and so sales are down now, of course, it's got cell phones, but many homes still use them. And, and it's also interesting that both the handset and the base of the phone send out pulse microwave radiation nonstop. They send signals back and forth because they're in contact with each other, the base and the, and the handset. And that means depending where you are standing when you're talking on it, the transmissions go right through your brain to the base station. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes sense when you explain it like that. It makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. So unfortunately, Government agencies, plus the companies that sell these devices, assure us that this radiation is, mm, they don't necessarily for sure harmless, but probably harmless, harmless. And however, there is tons of studies and evidence to show this is not the case. Um, and so what I look at and what everyone should look at when they go again and on the Google and looking at EMFs and so on, is um, independent, peer-reviewed research, not paid off uh, research by the big companies or whatever. And, um, but independent, peer-reviewed research, people who do not have that financial stake within it, they just care and are trying to find the truth. So anyway, research from Swedish scientists found that cordless telephones raise your risk of developing cancer. They studied patients with malignant brain tumors and found the cancer risk was multiplied for those who use, who use cordless phones. And Dr. Uh, Magda Harvis, a PhD, and I really like her, anybody who wants to Google her and look at her stuff, is a top expert on the adverse health effects of cordless phones. And she says they should be banned, wow. just total, totally banned. And she states there is conclusive evidence it harms your heart, your brain, your children. It affects brain waves, memory, and sleep. 
And yet how many people have a cordless phone right next to their bed? Could you spell her name? Yep. It's uh, M-A-G-D-A, and her last name is H-A-V-A-S. Great. Thank you. Then people yeah, can search And I believe that. she has her own website and lots of information there, too. So um, what, what uh, the statistics are right now, 40% of U.S. households still have a landline, and no doubt many of them are cordless. So that is kind of the background on the uh, history and the, also the danger of cordless cell phones or cordless phones. I mean, cordless phones. I do know that there is a is there's a movement to kind of bring back some of the what they're calling retro corded phones into the home. So for the few people that do have landlines, I do know that that is there's a kind of a trend with that because then it's something vintage. Uh, yes. But I know that that's not always easy to find. You really have to dig for those because so many were thrown away when everybody was bringing a cordless phone into their homes. Right, right, right. And that is, um, and that is the solution. That is the solution. If you want to have a landline, get a corded one. Get corded one. And there, and there you go. It's not emitting uh, radiation. So that's the thing. So, so what we recommend then really... Um, we never recommend keep it. When we go to houses, we say, just get rid of it um, and get a um, corded with a long cord. <laughs> get with a, a very walk. long cord. So walk around, you know, get a 50 foot cord. <laughs> You'd get everybody in the house all tangled up in it or it'd get under a chair or something. <laughs> so, uh, however, we do have suggestions for those who just have to have them. They want one. So, um, Keep the base as far away from you, the bases as far away from you as possible. There's the distance factor again. Um, keep the handset away from you as, as um, they're trying to connect all the time to the base. Unplug it when you're not using it. Definitely unplug it at night, just like the Wi-Fi router. Never keep it in your bedroom. Use the speakerphone so it's not by your head. Mm -hmm. Keep your conversations short. And they do have, um, although again, I think you have to really search to try and find one. They do have low EMF cordless phones. And then uh, also keep one corded phone plugged in to your, uh, your, your uh, attachments, you know, and so that if you disconnect the cordless one, you still can talk, still get your calls and still call. Mm. So. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one more um, thing on the cordless phones, and we do do the um, inspections in businesses too, and I think that's an important thing. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of denial. Um, we do schools too, but there's a lot of denial because, um, well, for one thing, you know, the businesses, the schools, the factories that, you know, they don't want to admit they're hurting their employees. Um, but, um, but, but, but they are. And, um, so even though home phones are becoming less common as people are using their cell phones, uh, more, the, the, the offices in our country and around the world, they are still using those cordless phones and wireless headsets. So these things are tremendous health risks for the people. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, uh, it's, set, it's sending signals uh, through their body and through their brains eight hours a day, and it's extremely dangerous. So, um, again, what do you do when you're working for somebody? But if you could share some information with them, uh, switch to a corded again, corded headset, um, air tube is best, and or, or just keep the wireless producing products as far away from your body and head as possible for those who uh, are working in those environments. Those are excellent suggestions. Well, that's, I would say that that's a great start if families can just begin to address those few small things. I mean, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And as we were saying earlier, that this rabbit hole of EMFs goes very deep and it can be incredibly overwhelming. And so for families that are just trying to get started with doing the best that they can, these three primary culprits, if they can do something to lower the amount of EMFs that are emitted in their home, that that 
those three components in and of itself can make a huge difference in a family's life and in their health. And yes. then beyond that, there are resources available for them to bring in an expert or learn more information on other things that they can do to continue to suss out what's in their home that's giving off all of these EMFs. Yes. And that really is the, um, is the goal because, you know, like, well, go live on a desert Island, but there's probably a cell phone antenna there. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's to reduce as much as we can, all the toxins it, coming from all those different things. So, but I was going to, um, I was going to share uh, some, an encouraging uh, word here if, if it's okay. And sure. um, I'm, I'm a Christian and this is from the Bible, but, it's about a story with Jesus. And there was a man with leprosy that came to him one day. And so leprosy back then was an incurable disease. And there are incurable diseases today for people. Um, and, and he said this statement. He says, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And it's so, it's so cool to me how Jesus reacted to that. Because people, you know, they wonder sometimes, well, Maybe God wants me sick, or maybe he doesn't care, or maybe he's not seeing me, or maybe maybe he's just, you know, off in uh, somewhere in outer space and, and doing something else. But, but Jesus reached out and touched the man, and he said, I want to, I'm willing, be healed. And it says instantly the leprosy disappeared. So, so that's best, best case scenario, right? Pray and instantly be healed. But, but if we're not, then praise the Lord. There's Connors Clinic and there's, you know, mm. EMF is backing and there's different things to help. But I just wanted to encourage in the sense that, that Jesus uh, loves us and he cares about us. He is a healer and he wants to help us. So I wanted mm. to share that. No, thank you so much, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could you give our um, listeners and our uh, viewers uh, a quick information, a quick little bit of information on just your company, how people can get in touch with you if they would like to reach out to you and Larray to work with them on additional ways to help protect their home from EMFs? Yes. And, uh, and of course, we do want to help as many people as we can. Um, our website is emfinspecting.com. Um, our phone number is 651-230-9429. And um, you can email us at um, info at EMF Inspecting, help at EMF Inspecting, safety at EMF Inspecting. Um, <laughs> but I think info is the main one we're getting now. And um, but at any rate, yeah, um, we um, we love we love to help people. It's our passion, really. It's not just a business. Um, we believe God has uh, led us into it, and and people are very grateful and thankful. They say there's not many people who do what you do, and so um, yeah, but well, we love it, and we want to help. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jim, for being on this interview with me, and please give my regards to your wife. Well, thank you, Michelle, and it was a delight to be with you today, and we just, uh, we just pray many people will be encouraged and helped. Certainly. We will be talking to you soon. Okay, dokie. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.